What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. A midweek Shark Bites episode, I know. What a rarity. I wanted to get this episode out quickly for you today, though, and give you my thoughts on it. As such, because I'm getting the episode out pretty quickly and we don't really have all the information yet, it might be a slightly shorter one, although if I start rambling, then it could definitely be a bit longer. <laughs> so today we're going to be discussing two fatal shark attacks that have happened in Egypt in the last few days. Now, again, guys, I'll start with a caveat on this one. I am a shark scientist, but I am not a shark attack specialist. My shark science does not not specialize around shark attacks, but I do know sharks and I can give you my thoughts and opinions on this one. Anyway, as reported by a number of different media outlets, two women have sadly died in shark attacks that have taken place in the Shal Hashish area of Egypt, a mere 600 meters from one another. Shal Hashish is only a stone's throw away from the notorious Sharm el Sheikh, which is of course the site of five shark attacks in the same number of days back in 2010. The two women involved are reported to be from Romania and Austria. So we don't have much information on the Romanian woman, but the Austrian woman, who appears to be in her 60s, managed to make it back to shore, although had lost an arm and a leg in the process. Apparently, she then sadly died in the ambulance on her way to the hospital. There is video footage again of this one, guys, that's doing the rounds on Twitter, although I'm not going to show it to you because this woman has sadly lost her life, so I don't think that would be respectful to her or her family. Saying that, I have seen the video myself, and it shows her snorkeling and trying to swim back to shore after sustaining those injuries. From that video, you can see just how close this has taken place to shore with onlookers watching, filming, and also trying to call out for help from a pier that overlooks the water. It looks like it's taken place probably 30 meters from the shore, which is wildly close to land. Now, the reports that are flying around from the different media outlets at the moment are suggesting that at least one of the incidents involved a mako shark. I haven't seen the footage, but supposedly there's a video of a mako shark swimming very close to the pier where the incident took place. But like I said, guys, I haven't seen that footage, so I can't confirm that for you. I think one of the other reasons that these media outlets are saying that it's a mako shark is because apparently some fishers have caught a mako shark since the attacks happened, as well as an oceanic white tip as well. Oceanic white tips are pretty common in the Red Sea and have been responsible for the deaths of tourists in that area in the past. It's thought that those spate of attacks that happened in Sharm el Sheikh back in 2010 was as a result of one or more oceanic white tip sharks. The bit that's most surprising to me though as a shark scientist is that mako shark report. Mako sharks are very rare to find in the Red Sea and it's even rarer to find them close to shore. These are generally open ocean species that like to feed on shoals of fish, so for one to crop up here is pretty surprising. Now at the moment, I've got no way of confirming that the shark that was seen on the separate video was a mako shark at all, or whether the fishers caught a shark that was a mako shark, but let's say for a second that both of those things are true. A mako shark biting a person is still pretty rare. It's possible and has happened in the past, but it's definitely rare. And even though these sharks typically prefer deep open ocean water, it's not impossible for a mako shark to come closer to land in this specific area. The general topography of the waters along this coastline are shallow inshore reefs, which drop off pretty steeply into much deeper water. So you don't have to go too far offshore to find yourself in much deeper water. So it's possible a mako shark could find its way into those shallower waters. Now I'm gonna try and delve a little bit deeper into my thoughts and opinions on the attacks themselves and the potential motivations behind them. Firstly, I've read in a few different locations that apparently animal carcasses might be being dumped into the Red Sea, not too far away from where these attacks have taken place. If this is true, then that's a surefire way to bait sharks into a specific area. And I can see how numbers of sharks in that area might have increased, particularly open ocean species. Now onto the sharks themselves. Oceanic white tips have been known to be on occasion, particularly aggressive and territorial. So it wouldn't surprise me if that was the motivation, if this shark was responsible for those attacks. But I think it's probably more interesting to focus in on the mako shark here, as that's the one that's being reported most commonly across those media outlets. When makos have bitten people in the past, it's generally when they've been on the end of a fishing line, and they can get very, very teasy in situations like this, and have often bitten fishers when they've been hauled onto the boat. An unprovoked mako attack in the water, though, is a much rarer event, but it has happened in the past. So it's not impossible for the incident involving the Austrian woman to be at the hands of a mako shark. Mako sharks being open ocean species don't tend to have territories per se, like some of the larger species of shark, i.e. bull sharks and tiger sharks. Then again, that's not to say this particular mako shark didn't like that snorkeler within its personal space, which is somewhat like a small scale territory to that shark. So it could have been acting out in defense of its own personal space. With lots of people in and around the water, this open ocean shark who's not used to seeing 
lots of people at the same time could have just got pretty pissed off and lashed out. I find it pretty interesting though that both of these incidents involved women. I'm probably making a bit of a generalization here, but on average, I'd say that women tend to wear more jewelry than men do. Jewelry is pretty shiny and when it catches the light in the water, it can look a lot like fish scales. Now for a shark like a mako that feeds primarily on fish, this is a potential recipe for a disaster and could easily have resulted in a few bites, especially on an arm or a leg where one might wear a bracelet or an anklet. So it's tough to say exactly what's gone on here and we still are waiting for a lot more information on this to surface and I'd wait for that information fully before jumping to any particular conclusions. I would hazard as well everyone that correlation does not equal causation here. So just because a Mako shark was seen in and around that area, it doesn't mean it was responsible for those specific attacks. For all we know, it could have been a tiger shark or an oceanic white tip or any other shark species that the Red Sea is famous for. But until we get that information from the people who are investigating those wounds on the women, we can't know for sure. But overall, those are my thoughts so far on the information that we've got. My thoughts, of course, go out to the families and friends of the two ladies that have died. I can't imagine how awful that must be for them right now. What do you reckon then, guys? I'm really keen to hear all of your thoughts on this one. Do you think it was a Mako? How about an Oceanic White Tip? What were the reasons behind the attacks? Was it the same shark or different sharks? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. If I hear of any updates as well, I'll make sure to comment them below and pin them to the top so you can read them. So make sure you keep coming back to the video to check. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Sharp Bites channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.